Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. So this video is going to be part of a series of several videos that I'm going to do over a period of time all about learning makeup, learning how to do your own makeup, all my tips and tricks on how to create certain looks really, really simply. I was talking to my girlfriends and they said to me, that is what they want to learn and that is what they want to watch because they don't know how to do their own makeup. So I decided to create this makeup look which is just a simple makeup look for the festive season. You can wear this out clubbing, you could wear it to family events, you could wear it to New Year's Eve. It is just something that's going to be really really simple that looks really glamorous and looks really dramatic and looks like you've tried really really hard. I currently have two videos in mind which is all about the skin and then all about the eyes. If you want to see more videos, please leave me a comment down below of what you'd like to see and what you'd like me to go more in depth with. In this portion of the series, I am going to be working all on skin, everything from my skincare before my makeup to how I set it and how I contour and highlight. So if you want to learn more, just keep on watching. Alrighty guys, in this part of the series, we're going to work all on our skin and how to perfect your skin. The biggest tip I can give you to start off with is make sure you know your skin and your skin type. Is your skin oily? Is it dry? Does it get a little bit of both? Is it drier here and really shiny here? You need to find out what your skin type is and what will work for it. My general rule of thumb is if you get oily after three hours of wearing makeup, you're more of an oily skin type. This is regardless of the temperature of the day or the weather outside. If your skin gets oily in that amount of time, I would generally say you are oily. If your skin just gets oily by the end of the day and it's generally just in the t-zone or on your chin or just one area, I would say you're generally combination. If it takes you five to eight hours to get oily, generally I would say it's more of a slightly oily, slightly combo skin type. And if you never get shiny, you never find your skin feels damp and it just feels dry and tight, I would definitely say you're more of a dry skin type. Obviously, I definitely suggest everyone should go and get their skin type checked out by a professional. I am not a skin professional. I know a little bit about the skin for makeup, but not about the underlying causes of skin conditions. So definitely make sure you go and get your skin checked out because once you know, you can really cater products that are going to work for your skin. I am obviously going to show you products that work for my skin type just because that is what I have and that is what I know. So if you have more of a dry textured skin type, this is what I like to do. For me, I like to start with really, really clean skin. So that means if I've had a shower, I will use one of three cleansers. If I'm in the shower and my eczema is quite bad, I like to start with this aqueous cream by Pharmacy's Choice. It is basically just a simple cleanser. It doesn't have any fragrances or anything that's added. It just cleans the skin and removes makeup. So if my eczema is really bad and I need it to be super gentle, I definitely reach for this one. It's super inexpensive and you can get it from pretty much any pharmacy. If my skin is going quite well, I switch between these two skin Institute products. So I have the L Lactic Cleanser and the Glycol scrub 14% so I swap between the two of these I usually use the scrub only two to three times a week just depending on how my skin is and what I've been doing if I've been exercising a lot outside I generally use this about three times a week just to make sure all the grime is out of my pores and then this one I use pretty much all the time. The L Lactic Cleanser exfoliates, hydrates and refines and the Glycolic Scrub is a deep cleansing and exfoliating scrub. If I'm not coming straight out of the shower what I like to do is use my Aqua Collagen Essence Tone Up by Pons just to really soften my skin and clean it from any impurities. I like to just pop it on a little cotton pad and then do little circular motions all around my skin. This is just going to soften any areas that are dry or flaky going to add a little bit of hydration. It's going to remove any products that are on the skin left over. Next, I'm taking the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel. This product is a great hybrid between a gel and a cream, and it just really adds that nourishing smoothness that my skin doesn't naturally have. I like to massage a small amount of that all over my skin. But under the eyes, I like to take my Neutrogena Eye Roll-On Hydro Boost Gel as well, and I just pop that under my eyes. I just use a small amount just to make sure that under eye area is as supple and as smooth as it can be. I also find for my skin type, this step actually really helps to reduce creasing and allow my concealer to look better for longer. The idea of prepping your skin or priming your skin before you put foundation on it is to create that even environment for your foundation to work with. It's not just about choosing the right foundation for you or the most expensive or the most popular foundation because that won't necessarily work for you. You have to create that balanced environment for any foundation to work. For me, doing that process generally makes most foundations quite good. 
Unless they are extremely oil controlling or extremely matte, I find that pretty much most foundations will sit quite nicely on this base. Similarly, if I go to the drugstore and I buy a 24 hour wear matte foundation with super oil control, it all sounds amazing, it all sounds really long wearing. However, that's not going to suit my skin at all. My skin starts to cake, it starts to flake, and my skin rejects the formula. So make sure you're using products that work for your skin type. I can't stress this enough, you can't just follow the trends and go with the foundation that's the most popular. You need to use something that works for you. Today I am going to use the Infallible 24 Hour Foundation by L'Oreal. This is one that I have tried and tested, as you can see it is quite empty. It is a great one that I like from Priceline or from the drugstore. It is super affordable, it's around the $30 mark, you can often get it on sale and I find it gives me a really beautiful full coverage finish that lasts all day. However, if I ever had to recommend a foundation to someone, it would be the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. This is $50 a bottle, however, it is liquid gold. For me, I can always put Studio Fix on my skin and I know that my foundation will last all day, all night, and if I don't wash it off, all throughout the next day. This stuff just works extremely well with my skincare prep and my skin type. With foundation, I am going to start with one pump. I am popping it on the back of my hand. You can also use a palette or anything that you have lying around. I like to use my hand. I know that my hands are clean as well. And to apply my foundation today, I am going to be using the Sigma Flat Kabuki F80 brush. Really like these sort of flat Kabuki brushes for foundation because they do most of the work for you. I like to dip my brush into my product on my hand and I like to start on this area of the face, the largest area over my face and what I like to do is start by just painting a little bit of it on and rather than then moving on to another area of the face I just like to keep blending it out so I'm not going to dip my brush again I am just going to take what is on my brush and in sort of sweeping motions brush it onto the skin once I am happy with how it is placed on the skin I like to start doing more circular motions to buff the product into the smaller areas of the face and make sure it is evenly distributed. You want to always make sure that your product is blended down your neck, even if it matches perfectly with your skin tone, just so that you don't get any build up on that part of your face. I'm now going in and taking my second pump of foundation and that will pretty much finish up my skin. Once you have evenly distributed all over your face, I've still got quite a little bit of product left. So this is, oh, it's got a storm. This is where you start to build up your product. So I'm going to take a little bit more on the tip of my brush and just sort of press it into the skin. Rather than doing swiping motions or circular motions, I'm now doing sort of pressing motions. And what that does is it just builds up product rather than moving product around. You use your swiping motions and your swirling motions the first time around to really place the product evenly on the skin. Once you want to build it up, you don't need to worry too much about blending it out or it being even because now we are building product up. So using those pressing motions just really, really helps to build it up without moving anything underneath around. Now that is two complete pumps of the L'Oreal foundation all on my skin, built up in the areas that I like it but kept sheer everywhere else. It is important to note that I didn't bring it all the way up under my eyes because I find if I bring my foundation all the way up there, when I do pop my concealer on, there's too many products under the eyes and they don't tend to sit as well. So I just blend my foundation up to about here and buff it out so that there isn't, again, a thick line or a shelf of foundation. It's just nice and diffused, but it's not all the way up. For concealer, I honestly can't recommend more the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Even though I am extremely dry, this is the perfect concealer for me. It does not crease, it lasts all day, and it's full, full coverage. The concealer is only $38, so for me, it's a really great investment, and the little bottle will last you forever. I mean forever, like six months at least. What I like to do is take one pump of that on my hand and I use a blender for this. This one is by Chi Chi. You can get them in a pack or you can get them individually. They are around $15 for the pack and a little bit cheaper individually. I dampen mine under the tap and then squeeze it dry so that it is damp but not dripping. You want to feel the moisture but not have your hands wet after you squeeze it. I then take the tapered tip of my blender and a little bit of concealer and pop it under my eyes. 
I like to use dabbing motions all the way out to the temple and down to about the edge of the nose. I am also using a lighter shade of concealer. As you can see, it just really helps to brighten up the face and it helps to also sculpt and contour. When you have that lighter under eye shade, it just really brightens everything up and it lifts the cheekbones as well. So I'm using something that's about half a shade lighter than my skin tone. Just using little bouncing motions to get all the way under the eye and blending it out as well. This is just little bouncing pressing motions. You don't want to drag it. It's just all about pressing and that is just going to blend it into the skin without losing any of the coverage. You can see now there is a complete difference between the two. This one's nice and concealed and nice and bright and this one just looks a little bit dull. You can almost see as well that this side of my face looks a little bit slimmer already without even doing any contouring. I also like to take what is left on my sponge and just press it onto my chin. I find that just helps to really balance my face and make sure that my under eyes don't look too stark or too light. Because I have quite a dry skin type, I don't generally set my foundation with a powder. However, I always set my under eye concealer. It's very much like what I mentioned in my eyeshadow tutorial. If you don't set that, it is going to stick and it's going to move around. So I am using the Chi Chi Contour and Highlight Palette. I chose this because it is inexpensive. I think it's $25 from Target. It has everything that you need to contour and highlight your face. So it's got your bronzing, your contouring, and your setting powders in it. What I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to take a nice tapered, small, fluffy brush, and I'm going to take this shade here, which is the lightest, that has a golden tone. Putting a golden tone under the eyes just really helps to enhance that brightness that we were creating with a lighter concealer. And I like to take a little bit of that on my brush and press it into the areas that we put concealer. These shades also just give you that little bit of extra lightness as well, which will just help to enhance your contour later. As I was saying before, now would be the perfect time to go in with your face powder if you do powder your whole face, but I don't. So what I like to do is just take that same shade, I pop a little bit of it on my chin, on these areas of my smile lines because I find I get creasing there, and a little bit on my forehead, just in the center and down my nose. They are the only areas that I personally need powder to set my concealer or my foundation. Everywhere else sits really beautifully without powder. That is because of my drier skin type. I absorb the moisture in the foundation or in the product that you're using. So when you pop a powder over the top, generally what they do is absorb a little bit of that moisture. So for oily skins, they help to absorb oil and they set everything in place so it doesn't move around. Before I go in with my contour and highlight, I usually wait a little bit just so that my skin is dry and I'll fill in my brows while I do that. Alrighty, now that my brows are done, I like to go in with a brush like this, which is like a tapered blush brush but I find it is the most easy one to use for contouring as well. I am personally going to take this one here, which is a lot more of a warm contour, just because I don't like it to be too ashy on my skin either. I am gonna use this mostly as a bronzer, so I've placed a little bit on my brush and I am bronzing out my skin. So what I like to do is use the fat end of the taper. So you can see this end is much fuller than this end, which is tapered and softer. I like to lead with this brush when I am doing my bronzing and I like to brush down my cheekbone and into my hairline using little circular motions and again like everything less is more you start with a little bit of product and you can always build it up I also like to bring it up onto my temple just to even out the face so that it doesn't appear that you have like a stripe of color on your skin Next, I'm going to take a little bit of the shade from the biggest square and I'm just going to focus that in the chiseled part of my cheekbone. So in sort of this area here where the most shadow would naturally be. And what this will do is we'll just create that contoured look without it looking too muddy all over the skin. Once there is nothing on my brush, I again use it to blend all of that out. So I bring it up onto my cheekbone and down onto my cheek area just so that then again we're not getting a big stripe of color and you can see that's a really nice warming of the skin the next little trick i like to do is take our beauty sponge and a little bit of the color that we use to set under our eyes or you can use your face powder and i just like to drag it so i drag it in a line under that contour like that Ooh, it 
it's gonna rain. Ah! So you can see that's now nice and chiseled, but it's still a really soft contour. This is definitely what I prefer to do. However, you can build up the product as much as you'd like if you prefer a fuller, more significant contour. Next, I'm going to take the same brush and I am going to use this Kmart blush. They don't have colors on them. They are $2 and they are amazing. They are beautiful blushes. I cannot fault them. They're creamy, they're easy to blend, and they've got enough pigment in them. This one has a slight shimmer to it, and it's a nice peachy, sort of soft pink color. Taking the same brush, using it on that angle, rather than this angle, which is what we use to contour, because we wanted a more precise carved out effect. Whereas when you do blush, you want it to be softer. So I use it that way on my face, starting at my cheekbones and blending out into the bronzer or the contour. My general rule of thumb is to start your blush on the largest part of your cheek. So you can see that my cheeks sort of protrude about here. Some people they protrude out here, some right down low. So just go with your face shape as well. Next we're going to highlight which is my favourite part of the whole process. I'm using the highlight shade from the palette because it is stunning. It is so beautiful. Highlighting just makes the face look way more luminous. It just makes the face look more finished, more luminous, and more glamorous. So I'm taking a little bit on a nice tapered brush. This is the Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35 brush. It is my favourite highlight brush ever. Ever, ever, ever. It's so, so perfect because it's nice and tapered and nice and pointy. I'm taking that on that highest point of my cheek just here, bringing it down to meet my blush. I don't go heaps far forward, I just meet that area of my face that starts being the largest or the most prominent and then all the way back into the temple and the hairline and I also like to bring it up to meet that brow bone highlight that we've done in our eyeshadow as well just so that then you get this nice C shape that really hits light and really catches light so your skin looks really really pearlescent and glowy. I also like to take a little bit on my nose and on my cupid's bow just to again balance everything out and make sure that all the skin looks similar. And that is your skin done. I'm going to finish with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus just to emulsify all my powders into a more creamy state so it looks more lifelike and more natural. You can also use a setting spray if you have oil control issues or lasting issues. And this is the completed look. I hope this video was informative and was helpful for you guys. Please let me know down below if you liked it and if you liked a little bit more of a lengthy video but going more in depth and giving you all my tips and tricks. As always, thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see the other portion of the series. If you have something specific in mind that you want to learn about, don't forget to leave me a comment and I'll make sure I make a more in-depth video on my tips and tricks for that area of the face or for that specific look that you want to learn to recreate. As always, have a lovely day guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!